Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. And mowers and blowers! Good morning. I'm in Sketchy and I'm driving all the way to Bellport, Long Island. Where am I going? That's right. My buddy Nick from Bellport lives there. And recently he texted me and said that he has this LT1000 hauler that he got that he took the engine off for his usual projects, but he doesn't want the rest of the carcass. So he's given it to me as usual. Well, as you know from a previous episode, he gave me a Kohler Courage 19. How are you? Yeah, I'll pick up the gas. It's leaking a little gas. I don't want to leak in your car. Oh. Which I'm currently working on to try to get it uh, started again. I do need a starter though. Anyway, this would be a perfect platform for that engine to sit on right because I don't have another carcass where that engine could be used so I figured I'd go pick it up and also I've got this idea not idea idea in my head about what I'm gonna do with this hauler it's pretty exciting and I'm not gonna leak it out to you yet you'll figure it out later on but the trick is I need another LT1000 hauler so I need two Anyway, so I'm on my way to go pick it up. I didn't bring my dog Boba because this is gonna take a while longer and I don't want him to have to sit in the car all that time. The reason why it might take a little longer is because Nick wants to keep the two front wheels but he was too lazy to take them off. So I brought two crappy wheels with me just so I can swap them out and I can load them easier onto my ramps into the bed of the truck. What's gonna be a pain in the balls also is that he says the uh, transmission disengage lever for the hydrostat transmission is locked up meaning he can't disengage it meaning it's hard for me to roll because it's a hydrostatic so what I'm gonna do is not only am I gonna put my crappy two front wheels on leave him the two wheels that he wants I also have to take one rear wheel off and uh, take the key out so that it'll roll freely so it's not gonna take the usual five minutes to load a tractor into the bed. I gotta do some shit first. Anyway, if you guys wanna hear this interesting story, listen to the story. If you don't wanna listen to the story, skip ahead. This is America, and also this is free. So, you can feel free to skip ahead if, if you want to meet me at, when I arrive at Nick's house. So as you guys know on this channel, I tell you basically everything that's going on in my life. What I haven't told you is about my health. Yeah, I'm pretty healthy, you know, I never get sick, almost never. I got COVID once, that's it. But I really wasn't very sick. Anyway, so my wife has high blood pressure. So she has a blood pressure cuff at home, the machine, you know, that takes your blood pressure. It's not exactly super accurate, but you know, it gets it in the general area. Anyway, because I'm always very healthy and I never get sick, I never go to the doctor. You ready for this? I haven't been to the doctor in nine years. The reason why I know that is because recently I looked onto my app and checked when the last time I went to the doctor and it was like uh, <laughs> 2012, <laughs> something like that, you know, or 14, something like that. Anyway, I had a fine bill of health and all that and so I don't see a reason to go to the doctor unless I need to go to the doctor. And honestly, you should stay out of hospitals and doctors because usually when you go to the doctor, something happens and you get sick or something bad happens. So that's why in my mind, I just never want to go to the doctor. So anyway, my wife uh, was taking her blood pressure and uh, as usual, and she says, hey, why don't you sit down and let me take your blood pressure? And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. So I sit down take my blood pressure. Remember, I haven't been to the doctor in nine years. So she takes it and <laughs> I was like, it was what, 165 over 100. That's a lot, that's high, that's high blood pressure. And also my pulse, 88, just sitting there, not doing anything, it was 88. That's a little high. So my wife's like chuckling, going, you need to go see a cardiologist. So what could I do? I had to go and get go see a cardiologist. So I saw the guy. Now I'm on meds to lower my blood pressure. The lowest dose they could find, 2.5. 
So I started taking it for like a week or so. I didn't see any difference. I took my blood pressure every day. And it was still very high, like 150, 160. The bottom one was like uh, 95, 100. So I'm like, this shit doesn't work. So I'm telling my wife, you know this stuff doesn't work, right? It's been a week and nothing's changed. Hardly anything. My pulse was still like mid 80s, you know? She's like, does it work overnight? You gotta give it some time. So two more weeks pass by and I'm doing my blood pressure every day. Now it's like 135 over 85. So it's getting there. It's lowered by a lot. Also, you ready for this? My pulse is averaging like mid 60s to 75. 60 to 75, somewhere around there, depending on what time of the day that I wake up or take my blood pressure, you know? So my blood pressure has gone down uh, quite a bit, as well as my pulse has gone down like up to 20 beats per second. And honestly, I feel much better because sometimes I feel like I would be getting a headache back here. Now I don't. So the moral of the story is, I can no longer stress myself anymore. I can't be rushing around going nuts, pulling a snowmobile thing 50 times because I'm telling you, the silent killer. You could have a stroke or a heart attack doing that shit. So from now on, I am 55. I need to just chill out, be a little bit more calm. When I'm doing stuff, I have to remember to relax and do it and not like strain myself. So as a result today, when I'm taking off the wheels, I brought my baby chair with me so I can relax and do it slowly. Anyway, that's my story. I now have high blood pressure. The cardiologist says, you know, you're 55. When you get to that age, you're gonna have high blood pressure. Your artery walls start to thicken and harden as you age, kind of like old fuel lines on your lawn tractor. You know what that's like when fuel lines collapse, they don't allow the fuel to go through. The same premise as your blood. When the walls get thicker, the blood has is, is going through a more narrower pipe. So therefore it builds more pressure and that's why you have high blood pressure. It's almost normal for you to have higher blood pressure as you age. And then of course, the doc sends me to get an echocardiogram, which is like an ultrasound or sonogram of your heart because durations of high blood pressure could damage your heart. So he wanted to make sure my heart was good. So I went and got an echocardiogram and uh, excellent results. My review was fantastic. So I feel pretty confident that I'm uh, in pretty good shape with respect to my heart. But I think I might make an appointment with a new uh, general physician and uh, go get blood work done just in case. So even though you haven't been to the doctor for a long time, you should try to go. At least to get your blood work done. Probably once a year. I'm probably going to try to do that now. Anyway, that's my health story. <laughs> I'm all good, but thought I'd share that with you fellas. Anyway, I'll see you guys at Nick's. Okay, guys, I'm here. He's not home. He went to work. His wife might be home. Not sure. But he said, just go in the back and get it. I says, you better tell your wife not to shoot me that I'm coming. He's like, no, I'd rather she shoot you. I'm just kidding. Anyway, here it is. Here's the hauler. It's got good wheels. He wants to keep these two fronts. It's got no motor. You know, why do people call these motors? They're engines. They're gas engines. If you want to call it a motor, you can only call an electric motor a motor. Anyway, uh, I'm going to set up my tripod and I'm going to roll this down to the street and then uh, take the wheels off, take the key out of the rear. So I decided to bring all this stuff over here because I have to take the key out of this wheel anyway. So if I have to do that, I might as well take the wheels off here while I have the jack here. Just going to casually relax. <laughs> Don't irritate my blood pressure. Not rushing. By the way, did I tell you this jack sucks? It no longer holds the hydraulics. Like you'll jack it up okay, but then once it sits up for a while, it starts to droop. 
So it's leaking some kind of fluid or air or the O-ring or something is worn. I mean, it doesn't leak or anything, but it doesn't hold the pressure for a while. All I have to do is just lift the tire a little bit. We could take off the uh, wheel, take the key out. Of course, with wheels that have been on here for a while, <clears throat> don't know whether or not it could be seized and if I it's seized on here it'd be really difficult to take the wheel off which I'm hoping doesn't happen please just come off oh yeah oh yeah and there's the key take the key out put the wheel back on put the c-clip back on and the washers and now this thing will roll free. Free! Free! Changing a tire on a lawn tractor is very easy. There. Now I'm gonna take the two front wheels off and replace them with my own two front wheels and leave these here for Nick because he wants to keep them. I'm going to put you on time lapse. very stiff but this thing rolls like butter not butter or butter <laughs> gotta go set up all the stuff for the ramps too blood pressure up I uh, left those two tires there I haven't picked up a tractor in a long time I wonder if my battery still works for my winch Lifepo 4 battery, fellas. The hook is way too big for the hole. That's what she said. <laughs>
I was thinking about ratchet straps, but it's still hooked onto the winch. <laughs> Not going anywhere. So pretty good. I didn't even break a sweat because I took it slow, calm, cool, relaxed. Now I'm on my way home. I just pulled over because I just thought to myself, self, since we're going backwards and the wind is going this way, it's possible the wind could catch the hood and blow the hood upwards and fly right off the highway into somebody's windshield. So I figured I'd bungee cord it just to be safe. Safer. I decided to jam my ramps underneath the wheels too. That ought to do it. Something happened up there. It's like some kind of fire. So we made it home. Nick tells me that he might have another tractor for me this weekend. Same one. It's exactly what I need for my future project. I'm so excited. Let me unload this thing. <laughs> Sweet! Now that's how you unload a tractor easily without even breaking a sweat. Now let's give you an overview of this POS. Your usual LT1000 or LT2000 or LT1500. Actually, the 1500s look a little different, but this is almost identical. Ah! Uh to an LT1000, just newer. Missing the cup holder, got the amp meter as well as the throttle, clutch, this was an Intec 18 horsepower. Uh, rear wheels, I believe they look like 20s. 917273764, this was Made in um, 06, 01, 04. Ooh, 2004. That's a pretty recent model for me. <laughs> Usually I get stuff from the 80s and 90s. It's a hydrostatic with this bezel thing that I was in need of a little while ago. This uh, transmission disengage lever does not work, which is why I had to take the key out. What did I ever do with that key anyway? Oh. There you go. Remember, it's right there if I'm looking for it. This is the cable for the uh, deck, the pulley. 
Wow, works. You could always need an extra one of those. Now for the project I'm thinking about doing, I'm not going to need that cable. Hmm. Decent seat, only has one crack, but the rear is in disarray. Parking brake shifter, like I said, if, when I pull that, that works, so the cable's good. This seems to work too, but it's really stiff, but that's okay. I'm not gonna need that for my project. Hood is pretty trashy, but it's okay because I don't plan on keeping it this color. At least it's not cracked. It scared me. Here's the innards. There's no cracks on the hood, which is good. Has the light modules. Wow, he didn't actually cut these wires for a change. Sweet. Uh, the steering is very stiff. I don't know why. And that, that stuff looks icky. What is that? Is that grease or what? Solenoid. Fuel shut off. Fuel filter. Gas tank. It's good. This is good for my project. Of course, it all depends on what he gives me this weekend. Of course, this weekend Super Bowl, so I'm not going to go get it then. But we'll see what happens in an upcoming episode uh, if he gives me another LT-1000 for my future project. So once again, the garage is full. <laughs> it's like... It's never going to be clean, ever. But anyway, this was my episode today, telling you about my health <laughs> and also picking up another project from Nick from Bellport. I'll be having another video like this again soon, probably in a few days, to pick up another one of these exact situations. What I'm planning on doing with two of these, you're just going to have to wait. We have that engine project that Nick also gave me. Uh, I have to try to fix the starter for it in the next episode. And then you guys will see how this project will progress. Hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.